Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. Over the years, I have accumulated a lot of material. And like you, you know, I, I buy material for a specific project or a specific, you know, uh, class or something. And I just keep gathering more and more material because I love it. I love it. And then you realize all of a sudden that you have not kept up with the organization of that material. And you start realizing that, you know, it takes longer to find material. It takes longer to do a project because you can't find what you're looking for. Or even worse, you go to make something and you don't have the color that you want. So that's what happened to me with my Frit. I love Frit. I love to use it to make shading. I love to use it for accents. Uh, I use it for a whole wide variety of different things. And I just love having a nice assortment of sizes and colors. So what had happened was, we years ago, we organized it by rainbow order. And that worked fabulous for a period of time. But then, you know, over a period of time, you know, I'm keep pulling more jars out, putting more jars back, and everything became a mess. I didn't know what I had or where it was. We felt like the best approach to organize all this frit was to take all the jars down and sort them by color. But before we could do that, we had to clean off the studio tables so that we had room to work. Clearing off the tables meant finding places to store my finished artwork as well. So we've got all these things on the table, and then over here we've got our wonderful wall of flame and all of our annual subscribers' names up here. It inspires us while we're out here doing this studio cleanup and this frit organization. I have three large work tables, and they're almost always covered with in a variety of different projects and a variety of different states of assembly. Because I've accumulated so much frit, I had to designate a very large area for storage. So this rolling rack seemed to be the best solution where I could store all of that, those jars of frit in one place. So now that we have the tables clear, we can go ahead and take those jars down and start organizing them by size, by frit size, and then also by color. I was shocked how much space there was on the shelves once the frit came down. And then I was also equally as shocked when I saw the frit laid out on the table and how much we have and how many repeats and surplus jars of the same colors and same sizes. Now this is consistent with not necessarily knowing your inventory, not knowing what you already have on the shelf and you have favorite colors. I certainly have colors I favor. And then just to be on the safe side to make sure I don't run out, well, you just order a little bit more, order a little bit more, or you open a jar and you don't completely finish a jar. And this is how you end up with such a, a, an enormous amount that your inventory isn't really maintained well and you know you don't know what you have and then it's difficult to work with. I knew that I had a lot of frit, but I think one of the biggest benefits to taking it all down and reorganizing it is I'm now excited about the material again because I have a really good sense of what colors I have, what sizes I have, and if there are any holes in my inventory, any colors that I'm missing or lacking, I now kind of have a good idea of what I might like to buy to fill in some of those gaps. I obviously favor this blue color and this aventurine blue because I have six jars of each of these different colors and sizes. And, you know, I'm okay with that because I love blue and it's a, you know, such a wonderful color to work with. So I'm not opposed to having this many, but what this enables me to do from moving forward is I can create projects with it use a bunch of this material and not worry about running out. And there's a lot of flexibility, creativity, and excitement about that. We organize the frit from powder, fine, medium, coarse, and mosaic in different colors and then line them up. We did transparent and opals together and then we stack them one behind the other. In the past, I had the frit organized in rainbow order and that was pretty, but the yellow and the orange can look similar when they're in the finer or powder sizes. The red and the orange look very similar when they're in the powder form. So this time I decided to separate the frit not in rainbow order, but do kind of in order where there was high contrast color variations. So it'd be easy to see, okay, this is a red, this is a white, this is a blue, this is a green, without worrying about, you know, grabbing the wrong color and not realizing that you had the wrong color until later. 
it was Joe's idea, his engineering mind, to go ahead and number the jars. So if the jar in the front has a number on it, a one, that means there's one more jar of that color. If it has a two, there's two more jars. And this way, going in, moving into working with the material, I know how much I have on hand. We also condensed different colors and sizes, which was a huge space saver. I saved one or two jars in the event that a jar breaks and I need a replacement. But, you know, the rest of these are just going to go right to this recycle bin. This cleanup really made the entire studio feel more functional and tidier. And all those things lead to higher creativity. And here are the jars all organized on the rack. Originally, we had some of the jars on the very top. But as we went through the different colors and realized we had enough space to put them on these three lower racks, we decided to do that because they were easier for me to reach. I know you all have different ways of organizing and storing your frit, and that's great. So do whatever works for you. Do what works for your space and your studio style and your working style. For me, because I have so much of it, this nice big rack worked well because I could store all of it, in, for the most part, in one location. And what we did was we numbered the jars. So if this jar has a number two on it, it means there's two more jars of this particular color. In some instances with the blue, it's stacked behind the front one. Like this one has a five on it. So there's five more jars behind here of this same blue. So I know as I use this jar up, what I would do is write a number four on the next jar. Uh, so this seemed to be a good way to organize and give me an indication of how much material I have and how much maybe I can use in a project because I'm not going to worry about running out. Now some of these other things where I only have like a one or and there's only another one or something with no number, then there's no more of that frit. So I know, oh, I have to be a little more careful with the amount I use on that one. And the extra jars are stored up here on this shelf. So this shelf and this shelf have all my, my primary inventory. And then the, all of this up here is extra material. So if I have a number down here and I don't see it right behind, I would look for that particular frit up here on this shelf. And uh, we brought everything down. I had some of the frit way up here before. And I'm neat as high as I can reach. So up here I was never neat because I couldn't really reach to put the material back or to take it down. Now this I still have to get on a step stool, but at least I can, you know, uh, or what I can do is look underneath and get an idea of what color is there. So this seems to work well for me in my situation in my studio. And it's all kind of in one location. So I'm real happy about that. So real pleased with the way this turned out. And so I know you have your own ideas and suggestions and ways of working, but I thought you might enjoy seeing how we went about managing so many jars of frit and so many different colors and sizes in such a way that I feel like it'll be efficient for me moving forward on my projects here in the studio. So thanks for joining us. Please like, follow, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's always helpful. And send us your feedback. We love hearing from you, and we're doing more and more videos that uh, address topics that are important to you. So we love that. Thank you very much. And please consider becoming a premium video member. We'd love to have you. We're adding new videos all the time, and we're having a great time there because creating this uh, nice membership, this community, and a space where we can all be creative and enjoy our fusing time together. So until next time, happy fusing.